the brash, the brazen, I will never be mistaken or overtaken to keep it prolific, consistent, and dedicated. Share, subscribe, and smash the bell. So we had Monday Night Raw last night. We got SmackDown Live tonight, and yes, I will be doing a combined Raw and SmackDown review. Just share, subscribe, and share my videos. So we had a historic announcement. You had a monumental main event that had huge, huge, well, success or lack of Roman Reigns, Bobby Lashley in the main event of Raw. And even with those two major things, a Mr. McMahon return, Triple H and Stephanie come back on Raw. Rumors that Dean Ambrose was backstage at Raw last night. Even all that, the numbers were down. Not a lot, but they were down a slight. And this is on the road, on the horizon to SummerSlam. The biggest party of the year. This is not good. You know what? You can have all the announcements. You can have all the returns. You can have all the monumental main events. You can have a pay-per-view main event on Monday Night Raw until the creative changes. And I think that's what it's all going to come down to. We can talk about ratings. We can talk about shove down your throat. We can talk about this. We can talk about that. But the bottom line is at the end of the day, if you as it describes, it comes down to creative. It comes down to the product. It comes down to television. And it comes down to viewership. And you know, the WWE says, well, we're not too in, 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 in tuned to the viewership. We, we really don't care about the viewership. Well, you know what? WWE reportedly um, does care a tad because they got this new deal with Fox. They got this new deal uh, that's been renewed with the USA Network. So viewership and numbers do definitely... Uh, you know, uh, you know they vary uh, to a degree, but there's one constant. And the WWE does have to worry, and the WWE does have to keep on track about the ratings and the views and the numbers and, you know, being able to pe keep people's interest. Because as Raw went on, well, you know, here's the thing. Even though a lot of people already knew what the announcement was going to be, why didn't the WWE save it for later on? Or why didn't the WWE throw us for a swerve? Give us the woman's announcement, and then why didn't Dean Ambrose come out? Because, again, there was rumors that Dean Ambrose was on Monday Night Raw, but once again, he was backstage probably because it was in his hometown. So Dean Ambrose didn't appear. But why didn't they announce the return of Dean Ambrose? Maybe that would have, you know, you got to keep viewers interested. You got to keep them invested. You got to give them a, a reason to tune in from one hour to the, to the next. Yes, that's a good start, a major announcement. But then when you have match after match with no reason, no rhyme, no strategy, no planning, you know, then it, get just, it gets to be overdone. And when you give the same product week in and week out, you know what? You can blame it on Roman Reigns. You can blame it on Kevin Owens. You can blame it on no universal champion. You can blame it on all that. But at the end of the day, Stone Cold Steve Austin, there was many a months, many a days, many a Monday nights. He wasn't on Raw. But then you had The Rock. You had Mick Foley. You had creative writing. You had backing. You had storytelling. Where's the storylines? Where's the predicaments? Where is the angles? And that is why this week's Raw rating was down. It was negative. It wasn't what it was supposed to be. It should have been a hell of a lot better. But what are you going to provoke it when they're not provoking us to watch? Giving us a reason to sit our butt on that couch, on, on the love seat, on the sofa, on the bed every night. And getting you off the bed, getting you off the seat. You know, just making you think and question what's going to happen next. But when you know what's going to happen next, that's what makes it predictable. And that's what the WWE is dealing with. And this is on the road to SummerSlam. The ratings are, you know, very piss poor right now. They should be a heck of a lot better than what they are. But you know what? It is what it is. And you can't cry over spilled milk. And Sean V. Damon sure as hell ain't going to cry over spilled milk. Now, once again, I'm going to give you a combined Raw and SmackDown review each and every Wednesday. It might be Wednesday morning, Wednesday night, or Wednesday afternoon. Just look out for that. So it'll be about a 20-minute video. 10 minutes for Raw, 10 minutes for SmackDown. And remember to smash the bell and refresh my YouTube channel multiple times a day for around the clock rumors, news, and headlines in WWE. The best of the WWE right here on the one-stop destination for World Wrestling Entertainment. The Brash. Sean View Entertainment. I will never be overtaken. But enough self-promotion. A lot of people ask me, Sean, what are your thoughts? What are your ideas? What are your opinions on this whole woman's evolution? Trish Stratus, Lita. AJ Lee will not be interested. She will not be involved in the event. Will now... I have no problem with the woman and the girls taking over. Listen, they're going to get the satisfaction. They're going to get the gratification. They're going to get the respect. But once again, it's going to be, has to be charged by creative writers. Or oh, more match, match after match, championship matches. Once again, that's great and that's awesome. A dedicated pay-per-view for just the woman to showcase their stuff. Now, is this going to lead to a future WrestleMania main event with the woman? Maybe. Who knows? Would I be in favor of it? I guess it depends on the predicament and who's in it. And if there's a good storyline and a good strategy behind it. I think the Divas or the women in the WWE are still a long way away from a main event at WrestleMania. But stranger things have happened in the world of WWE. Make no mistake about it. So the women's evolution obviously is taking charge. There's a lot of people commenting on it. There's a lot of discussion about it. And listen, uh, let's give it a chance. I haven't seen it. I haven't saw it. We have seen the women's revolution in the evolution. And at the pay-per-view in October... You know, maybe these women are going to turn over New Leaf and they're going to turn over a lot of eyes. They've already made a lot of history. They've already made a lot of impacts. 
but no more impact than at this pay-per-view. And there's still no word on yet if the women's tag team titles will be coming out or if they're going to be rejected. What's going on? We don't know there. So we're going to have to wait on that. But viewers and subscribers, I was definitely expecting a better Raw rating, but that's not what we got because we got the same writing. Listen, it was a great announcement. No mistake about it. Oh, well, you show me. we got to blame the internet for the low ratings. No, because the internet was around in 98 when WWE Raw was getting skyrocketed ratings. It's not only creative fault. It's also the fact that there's no competition. There's no one thriving. There's no one surviving. There's no one breathing down the WWE's back. There isn't the force of competitive spirit and to think outside the box mentality. There is none of that in 2018. But viewers and subscribers have no disdain because whether you're a WWE fan, whether you're in the WWE, outside the WWE, whether you have a factor and an opinion about the WWE, a philosophy about the WWE, whether you think you have the right momentum about changing the product, will change the rating and change the levelness and change this and change that. Stop pushing Roman Reigns. Listen, whether or not Roman Reigns is on your TV screens, the ratings are going to stay the same. Because if you have the same creative writers, the same staffing, the same backing, you're going to get this. And that's just the way it is. I know you may not like it, but that's just the way it is. So viewers and subscribers, aside from all of that, listen, I'm going to sit back. I'm going to have a cold beer. I'm going to sit back and I'm going to watch the events transfold. I'm going to see how the WWE does this. Also, because we're talking about all kinds of rumors and news in WWE. Also, John Cena vs. The Undertaker is reportedly not a lock for SummerSlam. The Rock is almost a lock to show up on Raw next week. The Rock, the great one, the most electrifying man in all of entertainment. Rumors that The Rock will be at Raw next week in Miami to go one-on-one -on -one with Elias. Congratulations to Elias. His CD is at the top of the charts. And you know what? you got to give Elias credit. you got to give him the stamp of approval. Elias is probably one of the most engaging and entertaining superstars on the red brand of Monday Night Raw. And it is not an eyesore. So viewers and subscribers, from the announcement to Bobby Lash and Roman Reigns, and then you got Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar again. Where does that put Bobby Lashley? Where does Bobby Lashley lay? Because, you know, Roman Reigns got a victory on Lashley. Well, Lashley also defeated Roman Reigns. What was that for? Or was that just to prove who was the better man? Do you mean to tell me that Bobby Lashley isn't going to step up to the plate and say, I deserve a shot. I deserve a chance. Do you think next week that Brock Lesnar is just going to show up to Raw and it's just going to be a face-off? Do you think the fans are going to accept Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar? And if the WWE does stick with Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam, and they will, will it be the main event? Maybe they should start it off as the first opening match. Maybe they should start it off with a Roman Reigns heel turn. There's a variety of different ways the WWE could spin this and go about this so the fans don't backlash. Because if you think that the fans are going outraged at Extreme Rules by counting down a clock, they're going to have a lot more problems than just a clock. Listen, I'm not a Roman Reigns hater. I'm not a Roman Reigns debater. I am just a fan of Roman Reigns. I'm a fan of Brock Lesnar. Do I agree with the tactics? Do I agree with the creative? Do I agree with the way they push him? No. Am I a fan of them? Yes. I've been a fan of Brock Lesnar since he was in OVW. I was a fan of Roman Reigns before he was in WWE. So be that as me, uh, you know, and I'm talking NXT. And we, when he was with The Shield, I like Roman Reigns even better. I mean, remember all the fans were chanting and raving and ra ranting about Roman Reigns at Survivor Series one year? Remember several years ago, everyone thought Roman Reigns was great. Everyone thought Roman Reigns was amazing. And then the WWE starts getting behind him. They stop pushing him. They stop putting him in main event after main event, WrestleMania after WrestleMania. And that is where people had a problem. That is where people had a, a different perspective. So viewers and subscribers, this is Sean's View Entertainment. Sign off. Make sure to watch all my other videos previous to this one. As I will be back later on with your SmackDown and Raw reviews later on tomorrow night or in the morning. Share and subscribe. More to come.